right, welcome back to Just Boxing Live. We are here at Sweet Science Boxing Gym in Hawthorne, California. I'm Sean Fitzgerald, your host. My special guest host today is not Anthony Stax Saldana. No. <laughs> Stax is at the 360 Tom Loeffler fights this afternoon, which features actually a number of people who have been on the show. So you guys make sure to check that out. Starts at 4 p.m. on Facebook. You can catch Nate Weston, Adrian Cor Corona, all on that card. And course Giandra LaBeouf is in his hey chair. Hey everybody I'm back <laughs> <laughs> for Gian more sound bites. <laughs> I know I'm gonna play the one for you in in a few minutes I did make one. Oh really? Real yeah of course oh, you're a sound bite on the show. I'm now. so flattered I'm so flattered. Giandra LaBeouf is uh, the creator of Bad Culture TV. I am at her feet again for the second week in a row. Oh Beautiful. it's my pleasure I feel like it's the other way around. <laughs> it's the other way around for sure. Definitely not. So you'll be helping us for the first half hour or so. Yes. And then you have to go do your red carpet thing. Yes, yes. A little bit, you know, switch up on the from the boxing to the uh, entertainment side today. So that'll be a little bit fun. You've been doing a lot of the boxing stuff, though. Yeah. You were you were at Tom Loeffler. Uh, was it at the weigh-in yesterday? or? No, I uh, I caught some clips of it. But yesterday, I, I got caught up in the other vortex. But I got home time enough. I watched the, the Pro Gray fight and Shakur fight. and So I got to catch up you on that You watched all stuff. the fights? I watched the World Boxing Super Series, all those fights, for sure. And then uh, I caught Shakur's fight after I got back home, but I didn't get a chance to see the rest of the card yet. It's difficult to catch them all, considering if you live here on the West Coast, then yes. uh, you were treated to boxing from about 11 a.m. until yeah, about it started 10 really early, right? <laughs> it was That's a long right. day. And of course, to my left, uh, our special guest this afternoon, Chelsea Anderson, undefeated 2 0 <laughs> professional boxer, coming off <laughs> of her second professional victory uh, right. October 12th. Welcome. Right. Hello, everybody. Thank you for having me. Mm -hmm. And on the end of the table, we have Aaron Tohill. Hello. Yes. Yes. Hello, guys. Aaron Tohill, you'll remember, was with us in January, but has had a busy year. You've actually been quite active. <laughs> I've been quite active, quite yeah. Quite active. You've had three fights since you yes. were last year. Yes, I have. Um, I mean, that's when we first met physically. Yes. Um, was in right, January? Yeah, was it was right in before? January. Because that fight was the end of January, January 27th for that's 360 right. as well. So, um, yeah, I mean, I came back in because I love boxing. I love to fight. I'm not coming back in to get a, a paycheck. We're not making money on these fights. Um, mm -hmm. I try to tell people that. It's like if I wanted to make money, I would probably go back into MMA. Right. Um, I just wanted to work on some stuff for me. And what's the point of fighting if you're not going to go in there and fight the best? So the last three, the three that I had were all, you know, champions, former world champions. And arguably I could have gone two and one this year. But I, people, if you don't understand boxing, a lot of MMA people don't. There's A and a B side. You're already down a few rounds. You got to either knock them out, drop them five times. I mean, you can still lose that way, but... Mm -hmm. So I went in there and staying active. Yes, it's not done for you yet. Is that correct? No, I mean, you know, the biggest thing was first off when I went in and fought Mari. Um, so I think maybe I was talking to Stax the other day about this, but he was asking how did I even get in this fight? So I had retired boxing a few years before MMA, and then I retired from both and focused on my own stuff. Um, Oscar De La Hoya when he did the Golden Boy MMA right you guys remember that so right. that was either the end of 2018 or the beginning of 2019 mm -hmm. so I was training with I went back into training just for my own thing I was doing my boxing but I went to go train with Antonio McKee I don't know if you know who yeah. he yeah yeah so I trained in Lakewood with those guys and they had an offer for me to fight on that card and I said, sure, I'm training. I, I wanted to come back and do one or two fights anyway. And um, we had eight girls turn it down. So I hadn't fought in eight mm -hmm. years. And like when I tell people, you know, I'm still learning my levels in boxing. There's still girls that won't fight me, but MMA is my thing. I was ranked number one in one weight class, number two in the other one. And um, that's, that's my sport. So we had, even with my long layoff, we had, you know, eight girls turn it down. And I was like, F this, you know, why am I, why am I going to do that? And then literally it was like a week or two later, Chuck called me. Bosecker? Bosecker. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And he Shout had called me, uh-huh. He had called me a few years before that and asked if I wanted to fight Mari. Mm. And I said, yes. And they turned it down. 
Okay. And that's when she was training with um, the Diaz brothers. Right. Right. On the desert. Uh huh. And I trained with them a little bit mm-hmm. before, a couple of years before that. So I knew, for some reason, I knew we would cross paths and we did. Look at that. <laughs> couple shout outs uh, on the channel here shout out to anthony stack saldana <laughs> yes <laughs> that name sounds familiar and Inherent cynthia spirit. saldana i appreciate mm-hmm. you guys paco perez what's up ray rotis uh, also uh, i just saw the like on there you guys make sure to like and share especially you stacks get, uh, get it especially. out there on the channel you know let people know I appreciate it so we're going to switch it up a little bit today. We'll focus on some of the boxing topics first so that we can do yes. that while you're here, Giandra. And yes. I know, Chelsea, mm-hmm. you said you watched a number of the a fights yesterday. Of them, yeah. Which ones did you watch? I watched the um, uh, Michaela Mayer. Okay, Michaela Mayer. <laughs> I watched that card, yeah. Shakur the Stevenson. The ESPN Shakur yes. Stevenson. Yes. Mm-hmm. Um, I think that uh, let's start there since we all, we all watched that one. Mm-hmm. I'll ask for your assessment of mm-hmm. Joette Gonzalez versus Shakur Stevenson. How did you think that played out? I think that Shakur just put on a clinic. It was not nearly as competitive as I thought it would be, considering uh, the narrative and the buildup to the fight. Sometimes that emotional quotient can take you out of your fight game. But I thought Shakur boxed beautifully. He had a game plan. He stuck to it. Uh, Joette had some success maybe in a round later on in the fight, maybe about the seventh or eighth. I can't remember what round. Uh, He had a little bit of, of energy and a little tie turn his way, but it quickly turned back to Shakur, he adjusted what he was doing and just boxed beautifully. Yeah. I think Shakur took that uh, seventh round off, though, and kind of... <laughs> yeah. It was a little bit of a courtesy round, I think, yeah. even on the scorecards. Yeah. I mean, you can make a case that Joette Gonzalez, he upped his activity, but you could even look at that round and go, you know, we just want to give the poor guy a round. Right. Here. Right? So... So why not? But Sad. essentially, it was, wasn't it? I, I was kind of I heartbroken. I didn't see it. I didn't is, see is it. A, so well, know. it's it's essentially, for those of you, of course, uh, who don't know the background of this fight, Joette Gonzalez and his family have a beef with Shakur Stevenson, who dates Joette Gonzalez's sister. That's right. Sister. I did. I did saw that. They're yeah. two undefeated fighters. Very soap operatic, right? They're two right. undefeated fighters, both competing for their first world championship, yes. a title that was vacated. Uh, and so you look at it, and for Joe at Gonzalez, it's a matter of family pride yes. to win this fight. And he was just completely absolutely. neutralized, just absolutely neutralized. It wasn't even, um, you know, you wouldn't even call it a beating that mm-hmm. he took, really. He was just outcrafted mm-hmm. over the course Out- of, of, of 12 down. rounds. Yeah. Yeah, just, just completely outcrafted. Two different, it was almost like uh, two different, I won't say amateurist because I don't want to disrespect uh, Joet that way, but it was just the levels were completely exactly mm-hmm. completely mm-hmm. different. You see the discrepancy in levels, and yes. I think that you know, looking at that fight, uh, Joet Gonzalez in particular, stylistically, that that matchup just doesn't work. He can make mm-hmm. a lot of entertaining fights with a lot of people, but that's Shakur Stevenson is not one of them. Styles <laughs> makes fights, yeah, and, and that, that was not the right style matchup for him. You know, a good dance partner will make it an exciting fight. It wasn't even a styles clash where it was an exciting fight. It was just two different levels of fighters, Mm -hmm. just completely different. And you remember, I think uh, when we were on the show last week, one of the things that came up was the difference between who I thought would win and who I want to win. You know, I was pulling for Joette Gonzalez. I don't normally like to say that, but I was Mm -hmm. pulling for him. Uh, But I had always expected Shakur Stevenson would win. So in, in that manner, when you watch the fight, it is a little bit heartbreaking. Yeah, it a little was, bit heartbreaking. It was, it, was, like, oh. it was sad to watch. You know, when we talk about the other fight, I feel the same way about the, the pro gray fight. And we'll talk about that, too. Why that may be a little sad, too. Let me ask you something. Fight of the night, pro grays or Robert Easter? Ooh, tough choice. <laughs> tough choice. I'm still going to stick with the pro gray fight, the pro gray Taylor fight. Wow. That was a really exciting, a lot of close rounds, a lot of combat, a lot of infighting, nobody coming up for air. They just went there and went to work. And then. But they were saying progress should have won. It could have been him or. It, no, it, uh, I, I, I had it, it was a draw. Tough, I, yeah. I personally had yeah. it a draw also. So meaning when I looked at it, I thought it had been a draw. However, I will say that. The writing was on the wall that Josh Taylor could win this fight. Yes. And I picked pro grays last week on the program. Me. And I literally waffled 50 times in between then and the show uh, or this show. And before it, I was thinking, I don't know if I, I don't think I made the right pick. I mean, we're talking right. about a guy who's bigger. He's longer. He has an extensive amateur pedigree. 
he has a more impressive resume, Taylor. Like you look at it and mm-hmm. you're like, okay, well he he took he beat Postal, right? Postal mm-hmm. only mm-hmm. lost to, to mm-hmm. him and Terrence Crawford, right? right? And and he went the distance with both guys. You know, he and you just look at the and you're like, even though he's only had 15 fights, the experience is there, the skills yeah. are there. Absolutely. And and that's what came out, I All think. Right. He just, after those initial rounds, I thought Pro Gray was boxing beautifully, and he has just that tough, enduring spirit. And somewhere, I don't know if it was a conditioning issue or what happened toward those middle rounds, but you could see Taylor start to pull away, and he just looked like the sharper, better fighter through those middle rounds. Uh, Pro Gray picked up some momentum towards the end, but it was just too little, too late to pull off the win. But there were just so many, so many, so many close rounds in there. I didn't understand one of those scorecards. I, that just didn't well, make any sense. One seventeen, I think, is what I, it was. Come it was, on, it was one seventeen. I'm like, he didn't. You didn't think he did anything? I yeah. feel the same way about that fight, like you felt about Joette Gonzalez. Because I'm Creole. My parents are from Louisiana too, <laughs> and so I always say, "Oh, Pro Gray's my cousin." And whenever I get a chance to talk to him, I'm like, "Hey, cousin, how you doing?" And you know, that's probably one of the very few fighters that I will root for publicly because, you know, it's supposed to be impartial and all that. Yeah. But, um, but yeah, I kind of stand for him publicly. He'll be back, but I had it a, a draw, but I'm not disgusted or think right. it was a robbery or yeah. anything that Taylor yeah. won. There's kind of a cliche in boxing, which is like uh, nobody lost this fight, but it really is that yeah. type of fight. Yeah. Like the stock of both people, like nobody's going to look at that and go, I don't want to see Regis fans, Progress anymore. The fans the won. The fans won. Definitely right? won. Like, you know, and, and I don't like the cliches, but the truth is the fans won. Yeah, like, the it was, fans it was won. Yeah, yeah, fight. Exactly. Yeah. Yes. I know the audience there was like, wow, this is. I, w- I you know, that I wonder was what fire. that fa- I wonder if the fans went in. I mean, obviously you have your person that you're going to root for. And since they were over there, there were going to be disproportionately more fans for Taylor than pro grade just because of geography. But once they got there, there were no booze. There was pre- uh, lots of humility and respect mm-hmm. between the two fighters. And I love that. I saw I their that. posts this morning and I was like, yeah. class, complete class, class. Complete. you wow. know, Taylor's face. Woo. Yeah. yeah, his both, eye was something of, else. Both of them. Shenandoah just jumped on and said, "I don't know how Taylor could see out of that eye." Yeah, yeah. I, I don't know that he could. You Actually, know what? It he probably me? could not. Who was it that uh, Chris Algieri fought when his eye was looking all beefed up? Provodnikov. Like that? Yeah, 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 he was, won that yeah, fight. Ruslan That's what it reminded me of. Yeah, that was really bad. Mm-hmm. Shout out to Jason Soto. Jason, happy! I believe it was just your birthday. Happy birthday, brother! Happy birthday to you. <laughs> so there was one other fight on that card I want to ask you about, Giandra. Did yes. you watch uh, Derek Chisora and David Price? Yes, I did, and I'm glad that they saved David Price from himself. I was going to ask you about the towel throw. Ugh. So th- this is a, a, a fight which, for as long as it lasted, was an entertaining fight, in my yes. opinion. So David Price, uh, if you guys haven't seen, mm-hmm. he was the next big thing. Six foot nine, massive heavyweight, tremendous knockout power, and then it was revealed that he's a little bit chinny. Yeah. Right, so he had a, a several opponents that were able to knock him out that uh, he probably was supposed to have beaten. Right. You talk about the A side yeah, and B yeah, side, yeah. and since then he's sort of been relegated to this gatekeeper type role, uh, as, yeah. as, as you might say. Uh, fighting Derek Chisora, who's also battling against being in that role in the heavyweight division, just because the division is I've stacked with him, a lot yeah. of people. Yes, uh, there was a little back and forth action. David Price was hurt at one point and then landed a dramatic uppercut on Derek Chisora. Right. And then David Price ended up going down. Was it the fourth round, fifth round? I think it was the fifth. I yeah. think it was the fifth. Don't kill me, people watching, if it wasn't. Yeah, so f- <laughs> fifth round, he goes down, and uh, they threw in the towel immediately. They he, threw, I mean, he got back up and was able and said he was able to continue in his corner just – put that towel mm-hmm. right in the ring. Mm-hmm. It was kind of expected that that was going to be the conclusion to that fight because Price has got some some miles on him. And I think the corner just saw what that sustained attack from Chisora was going to do to him. And I think they made the right decision. Even before leading into the fight, fans anticipated a knockout win from the announcement of the fight, which is uh, sad on his ca- on his side, but he's a warrior. He's going to go out there and do what he needs to do. Yeah, I don't disagree. I guess I have to rewatch yeah, right? all of these fights <laughs> when I get home because I like to, you know, give my feedback too. But I'm like, yeah. I missed them all of them. Yeah, there's there's. But what so about many the um, Michaela Mayer? 
yeah. That's she's, right. She didn't want to talk about Michaela Mayer. Mm-hmm. Michaela Mayer uh, knocked her opponent down within the first 30 seconds of the yes. fight. <laughs> yeah. She's really coming along. Top Rank is doing yeah. some good things mm-hmm. with her. She's what now? 11, 12 and 0? Something like 12 that? 12 and 0. After yeah. this yeah. one? I think it was, she was 11 0 going in and now 12 and 0. Mm-hmm. Yes. Coming back to that. So Michaela Mayer. She's very busy, very active. They put her on all their cards. Yeah. They're just quietly doing the work. You know, some of the other female boxers get considerably more attention than she does but she's really getting the work that she needs she's yeah. super active which is critical and she doesn't complain she goes out there she does what she needs to do there's never any controversy surrounding her or any side story that detracts from her fight but at the same time i think a lot more people need to get involved and see what she's doing out there because she's quietly creeping up there and you never know what might happen in the next year or two for her. That's true. She doesn't quite have or carry the clout that some of the DAZN and or Clarissa Shields and them. Mm-hmm. And now like Katie Taylor, Cruise. for instance, mm-hmm. like Katie Taylor has a lot of, of, um, I guess machine. publicity. Yeah. Mm-hmm. A lot of the machine behind her. Whereas mm-hmm. I don't feel that way about Michaela Mayer. She's still kind not, of not at all. I mean, and you know, you have to think about where she's at. She's at top rank and, she might be the first, well, I don't think she's the first, but she's the first fighter that I've seen that they've actively done things for. And this is the same machine that created a Floyd and an Oscar. True. And yeah. they truly promote. And we don't know what's going to happen in the next few years. You know, Top Rank does work with Lou DiBella. They've, the Serranos mm-hmm. are over there. And Heather Hardy is over there. And, and even though the politics may keep her away from other fights in the future if they get people in her weight class on the PBC platform or whatever, but they are doing the things that they need to do to at least minimally keep her active, which is which is good. A but good then thing. A lot of it is, you know, we talk about too self promoting mm. because women's boxing is not as popular as MMA. People not at all. people aren't watching it. You know, we were talking about this the other day too and MMA and UFC, they do a great job, yes, p- promoting their people, but they do a lot of um, documentaries on them. It's not right. just like, they don't just like pick somebody like 24-7. Right. We're going to just focus on these two. I mean, they go across the gamut and they get a lot of cross promotion. They get other advertising, they get other documentaries. And that's how people get to connect with these fighters. And they don't understand that. It's not always just the fight. We need to be able to, uh, you know, are they like me? Can I relate to them? What else do I like? Do I like their story? Beautiful girl, but how else can I relate to her? And if you're just fighting, that's why, like, you know, I'm really pushing her to get out here and do these things because you can be very talented, but you got to get out there and you got to talk. You don't have to make some bullshit like persona up and you don't have to be like that, but you can you know, still convey it and get your, who you are across to people. Cause it's the fans that. That get you over. That right? get you over and that yeah. make this happen. You know, I know we we're just boxing and I don't want to take it too off of the boxing road, but a clear example of that on the MMA side anyways, mm-hmm. with look at Amanda Nunez Absolutely. versus Holly Holm versus Ronda Rousey yeah. and the machine yes. with that. So yeah, self-promotion is the name of the game yeah. to bring it back to boxing. Yes. I look at the, the unified champ Franchon Cruz Love and her. she's really, you know, trying to put herself yes. out there, trying to do things, Yes. but she still needs the golden boy machine to help her. Yeah. I mean, you know, they always have the spotlight on yes. them, good or for bad, mm-hmm. but you, yeah. just mm-hmm. a matter of utilizing the spotlight mm-hmm. for her. I agree that particularly with UFC, one observation I've made here in the past is that I feel like once they decided to allow women to compete in UFC, they mm-hmm. went all in yeah. in terms yeah. of promotion, meaning uh-huh. there's not really a difference. It, they're all just UFC fighters. Yes. Women's MMA is just MMA. It's just MMA. And they receive the same kind of push and publicity Correct. that men do. They headline events. Correct. They do all these different things. Whereas in a lot of sports, not just boxing, but particularly boxing, uh, there's this old school point of view that it's like a light version. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? Like it's not it's not the same as real boxing. This is like women's yes, boxing yes, or yes. this is women's golf. Right. Or this is women. You know what I mean? That makes sense. Yeah. Um, and and I think that the unfortunate part of it is that there's so many entertaining women's fights like you you talk about Heather Hardy, for instance, right. I've never seen a bad Heather Hardy fight. Never. Not ever. And she right? sells tickets. Yeah. yeah Big they time. Like, they like her. Big yeah. time. Like in New York. 
And so I think that, uh, you know, it's unfortunate, but it's something that over the course of time, I think we're seeing more and more in women's boxing, more <coughs> and more women's stars. Yeah. And the only other yeah. place that I can think of that really gives women the push is Mexico. Like when you see yeah. Mex fight women's fights in Mexico, the fans turn out, they enjoy them, they're active, they're engaged. And I don't know what needs to happen on this side to make that happen. I don't, someone just has to take a risk. Well, people don't and understand invest. is that, the, you know, why don't fights and boxing happen? Because there's all these autonomous belts. Right. People are making up belts. It's this, the Aztec belt, the franchise belt, this belt, and they always have a new one. And they, they stop people from fighting each other. So like in the UFC, there's one belt. The other autonomous organization is Bellator. Yeah. You know what I mean? You got these three, one FC, you one got a FC, couple, yeah. a couple big ones in Japan. Ryzen does stuff. Right. But Dana is big on that. That's why he's coming in with Zufa Boxing. Mm -hmm. He wants to start bidding on these fights, and he's already been very open about that because he wants people to fight. Mm -hmm. And that's the thing with the UFC. These You're forced to fight. You have to. And he'll shelf you. It's like he can cut your con he, They can do whatever they want. Right. So they make these guys fight. They make the women fight. Look at, I know Cyborg had the opportunity to rematch Amanda. Whatever happened is between them. I don't know all the details. Well, Dana didn't like some of the stuff that they were, her PR team was putting out. And he was like, fuck you. We're out of the cyborg business. And then she went to Bellator. She'll be successful there. But it's like, you know, the UFC, Dana makes these fights. He forces them to happen. And they know they're going to fight if they sign with them. As it relates to belts and franchise champion, I just have one thing about uh. that. Franchise champion. <laughs> <laughs> I told you. I and told there's you. That's, that's, that's sound bite. awesome. And there's a new one. Now we have a. That's so cool. You have oh, to send me a, that. I need right. that for there my is, phone. Uh, and we have a new f yes. franchise champion. The, the, the WBC revealed that Vasily Lomachenko yeah, will that. now be yeah. the yeah. franchise yeah. champion. <laughs> yeah. And so, oh, that's awesome. So what exactly <laughs> does that mean? Because it's him and Canelo now. And somebody I saw this morning, they were saying, if you're the franchise champion, you can never lose that title right i don't even understand what, does that what mean? it mean i don't know what well, is that? I, yeah. it, I, I don't i don't know if it's just like an extra Nobody check knows. or you know i don't know sign me up i don't <laughs> sign right. me up i could be the that. franchise I can champion be the <laughs> franchise champion i don't even know what that means exactly i know a little bit i kind of tuned in a little bit to the wbc convention stuff just because i had a few colleagues there mm -hmm. but i don't i don't know what that means and I think Lomachenko's version of it is different than Canelo's version mm. because I think Lomachenko still keeps his titling and pedigree, whereas Canelo's is more of a emperor's new coat type of thing. Mm -hmm. I don't understand exactly mm -hmm. how that works. Yeah, uh, Nancy Rodriguez is on the chat. Nancy, if you have any feedback on it, I know that yeah. you were you yes. in Cancun. Uh, if you have any feedback on it, chat it to us. Let us know. Uh, how the franchise champion status works. I do know that as a result of this, Devin Haney was made the official WBC world right. champion. Right. Uh, okay. um, but I also do know that it is, from what I gather, considered a promotion of sorts. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. one of the things that I find most challenging getting my head around is that you're essentially a champion that does not have to f fulfill the obligations of a champion. Right. Right. That so essentially, like, like Devin Haney has to go and fight mandatories and people who come all that. Canelo gets to pick who he fights, mm -hmm. right. right? Like Lomachenko or, uh, you know, like I think that means that he no longer has to fulfill the obligations of the WBC world champion. Like mandatories. Mm -hmm. Like his certain, mandatories right. and stuff like that. So that he sucks. does not have to fight his mandatories. That's, and that's crazy. And, and I, believe, I think that sucks. And yeah. I, and I, I'm fair, relatively confident that that's how it works with Devin Haney taking over the status of, of world champion. Like, look at um, now. Now we don't. We don't necessarily are not going to get that fight. Then, if you right. want it, Absolutely. if you were clamoring for that Lomachenko Haney matchup, right. he doesn't have to fight him. Well, think about it, because like with Canelo, his mandatory for a very long time was Charlo. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. They made Canelo the franchise champion. Charlo is the official champion. He no longer has to fight Charlo. He can go fight whoever he wants. Right. But it's still mm -hmm. like a representative of the WBC. It kind of so cheats like, Charlo out of some money. He yeah. he didn't get the Canelo fight. He right. just got the title. They Very just gave him the belt, right? So I think in some ways it's a promotion. And the key distinction to me is who has to fulfill the obligations mm -hmm. of WBC mm -hmm. world champion because that falls now on Devin Haney. Mm -hmm. right. That falls on Charlo and, the, you know, the other guys. So. I bet Charlo would rather have that fight. 
I if I was Charlo, I would probably rather have that fight as yeah, well. Even if you take money. a loss, even if you take a loss, it's the same thing when Canelo fought Floyd. If you lose, you're losing to Floyd. If Charlo loses, he's losing to Canelo, mm-hmm. and he gets so, paid, and he, he get gets paid. paid. That's the biggest yeah. thing, right? They're and especially when we're in an era where everyone is so critical online about records and opponents and pedigree mm-hmm. and path to Hall of Fame, etc. When the story is told later, what's going to be the story of Canelo's legacy? What's going to be the story of Charlo's legacy? Is it kind of like an asterisk where mm-hmm. ah, he was the champ, but he never fought but he never Canelo? Fought. Kind so, of like Floyd, he never yeah. fought Margarito. Yeah. You know, is there an asterisk? So it's it? great about UFC. We talk about that. Like they fight. You have and to they fight. got losses, but yeah, you're fighting against other really good people. Yeah, Dana's not afraid for his chance to take an L. No. It just and makes the more fans don't give a shit yeah. either. Yeah. No one cares. No, no one cares. cares. Everyone doesn't want to lose. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. So I will say I know that you have to get going to fulfill some red yeah. carpet responsibilities. Yes. Yes, but yes. thank you for spending some time to but talk I'll with be us. Back. But before you go, uh, there is a responsibility for anyone who sits in that chair. And we like, to, we like to call that responsibility Stump Stacks. It's a I'm game sure. where we stump stacks with boxing facts. And here's how it works. I have pulled several facts about Chelsea Anderson, our guest, from recent (laughs) interviews, Instagram posts, uh, and the sort. I will relay them to you. One of them I made up. Your job is to guess which one. Are you ready to play Stump Stacks? Yes. Come on, Poker Face. (laughs) Come on, Gaga. I I don't got one of those. Keep a straight face. Keep a straight face. (laughs) These are good. Here we go. (laughs) Number one. Leading into her second professional contest, Chelsea established a new pre-fight ritual she intends to carry forward. Following the weigh-in, she consumes, quote, mounds of spaghetti and then has her toenails painted. Chelsea described carving up and staying relaxed as key parts of her preparation for fight night. Number two, at the age of 21, Chelsea began to dedicate herself to boxing and fitness. Still several years removed from linking up with Aaron, Chelsea found inspiration in other athletes, such as four-time International Federation of Bodybuilding Champion Nicole Wilkins. A photo of Nicole was even once set as Chelsea's wallpaper as a reminder of Chelsea's goals. Number three, following her second professional victory, Chelsea took to Facebook to thank and apologize to friends and family who purchased tickets for a quote, one minute fight. A sentiment she perhaps has in common with former world heavyweight champion Mike Tyson who recently spent time kicking it with Chelsea at Tyson Ranch headquarters in El Segundo, California. Ooh, that sounds like a fun time. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's see. Make a muscle for me. (laughs) Okay, so that one is probably true about the bodybuilding. I'm going to say number three because I know it goes down at the Tyson Ranch and you have to be tested. So I'm going to go with number three. Well, I'm... Terribly sorry to have to do this to you, but it's a tradition here, so. You lose! (laughs) (laughs) You lose, sucker. I lost. You, in fact, were at Tyson Ranch recently. That's awesome. Can I go next time? It was fun. I want to go. Oh, no, this was. No, I went with my cousin Holly because she was working there for a little bit. That's right. Yeah. Well, and I can then, be your cousin Jay. I want to go. <laughs> and then you took me to the party. And thing. Mike the Tyson party. was Mike yeah, Tyson fun. was there, right? Yes. Yeah. That is and awesome. You guys, yes. you guys got your picture and everything. I did, yes. Yes. Oh, that's so, awesome. So the fake one was which one? The first one. I don't, <laughs> get, I don't ever get my toenails painted. Oh, okay. Yeah. I, but <laughs> I got the nails, sound... but no toenails. I don't like people touching my feet. <laughs> I didn't think that one would be true just because we just talked about a certain burger franchise before I walked in. Yes. When, we, when I was walking in, so I'm like, nah, she's probably having like a burger. <laughs> Heard a fight. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah. no, because I am vegetarian, oh, not okay. vegan. Yeah. Okay. But you can get grilled cheese at In-N-Out, so that works. That's <laughs> right. Oh, that's awesome. That's actually what I wanted after my fight, but I got pizza instead. <laughs> Thank Absolutely. you very much for participating in this round Thank of Stump Stacks you. and filling in for Anthony Saldana today. I know. I wish I could stay for the whole thing, but we they changed my too. time. But you so. are welcome back anytime. I'll be back. Okay, very good. Thank, <laughs> Thank you, you everyone. Thank you. All right. I, fi- I need some walk-off music. I know. Some, I, didn't, I didn't create a sound effect. I'll give you the franchise champion one. Can franchise I sit on that champion. side? Can I sit on that side with you? If you'd like to. Yeah. Yeah. Go for it. Pretty Move middle. over here. Huh? Don't forget your phone. Balance it out. Uh-oh. No, She's going to move to this side. Is that okay? <laughs> All right. We are not done. For those of you who are still on, we still have to talk about Chelsea. Oh, cool. Yeah, we Yay. still have to talk about Chelsea and Aaron. <laughs> That's what we're Just here to Chelsea. do today. Just Chelsea and Aaron. <laughs>
What did you think of Stump Stacks? Were you surprised? No. <laughs> Who would think that I would be hanging out with Mike Tyson? <laughs> <laughs> that was a good one. That was a good one. She's really cool. That's a, a good um, yeah, she's great. co-host to have. Deandra? Yeah. Yes. yeah. I love having her on. This is her. Uh, she, she was our guest last week. Right. And I, I needed a, a co-host this week, and, and she was polite enough to fill, fill in for us. Yes. So thank you to Deandra, and, and all the best to her today. We look forward to seeing her again coming forward. So, Chelsea, uh, you are an undefeated professional fighter. You are 2-0, and just two weeks removed from your last victory, which was, in fact, as I said in Stump Stacks, <laughs> a 72nd <laughs> win. Starched her <laughs> ass. <laughs> uh, but uh, and one of the things that we talked about uh, before we get to that was uh, your amateur background. Yeah, uh, you actually have uh, some amateur fights. I think you were mm-hmm. seven and one as Correct. an amateur. Yes, yeah, seven. Uh, and, one. and you went five and zero. Oh, you were undefeated in 2018. Yes, sounds right. Before you decided to turn pro. Yeah. So you have uh, essentially been boxing since you were 21 years old. Yeah, I mean, um, long story short, I was drinking a lot back then. So I didn't really box that much, but my dad was trying to keep me busy. So he brought me to the gym he was at to just kind of help me get my shit together. Mm -hmm. (laughs) So I wasn't boxing that much. And then I got sober um, July of 2013. So I was 22. And then from there, I mean, I was doing, I thought I was going to be an MMA fighter at first. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) I wanted to beat Ronda Rousey. (laughs) So I was was doing some jujitsu, some Muay Thai, and then... um, in like 2016, I was like, I just want to box. I fell in love with boxing. Um, and then um, my first coach, who just does my conditioning now, I told him I want to fight. He had me do a couple smoker fights. And I was like, I mean, I got so tired. I thought I was going to die. But I was like, that was awesome. I want to mm-hmm. do that again. And he's like, if you actually want to fight, like you need to go to a different gym with a legit coach that is obsessed with boxing and is going to you know, take you where you want to go. So that's when I went to bobby's boxing in laguna beach shout out to bobby's shout boxing out. yes bobby, bobby. <laughs> and then from there i mean when i got to that gym i was like 170 pounds i was a big girl so he really helped me get in shape because i went from boxing three times a week to boxing five times a week and um he really got me in shape and i had my first amateur fight in august of 2017 and then my second one two weeks later and lost that one because i gassed out because i was a little fatty and then, <laughs> and then I, I started training again with my conditioning coach. I got in shape, and I rematched that girl, and I won. And me and her are friends now. She's a really awesome chick. And then from there, just the kept going. The limit. Yeah. <laughs> from there. But it was hard to find fights, though. So that's why I didn't have that many fights. Mm-hmm. So many times, because just in the last two years that we've been friends, yeah. I mean, she's had... We went to uh, El Centro. A, a ton. <laughs> I couldn't even count how many that either, you know, fell through or yeah. the, the person didn't show yeah. or. Yeah. Yeah. When we drove the first time I drove down to El Centro. The girl didn't show up. That's right. El Centro is by Mexico. So it was a long drive and she didn't show up. And then up. they wanted and you all, to come back, right? The yeah. next day or yeah. something. You yeah. Guys and like, then, no. yeah. 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 You two, uh, you mentioned that you met two years ago in 2017. Yeah. I actually, so, yeah. as I was yeah. preparing for uh, Stump Stacks, of course, I, I do a lot of research in order to get those facts, and I came across the Instagram post uh, that you posted after sparring, Aaron, Ooh. for the first time. <laughs> the <laughs> caption on that post simply read, quote, ass equals whooped. That was she <laughs> beat me up. Listen, so <laughs> my, our, my coach, Bobby, was messaging her coach, Yes. Nine million times um, nine to million spar times. her. And I'm like, Bobby, you're going to get me killed. Like, before I met her, like, I saw her as this, like, six foot two, larger than life person. And I was terrified. I was <laughs> terrified. <laughs> and so we went that day and she put it on me. She, I think it was like the last round. I was just trying to survive. And she hit me in the head. And I was like, that was the first time I think I f- almost felt like I was going to get knocked out. And then she hit me with a body shot. And I was like, just don't go down. Just don't go down. And I was just sitting there with my hands up. Just don't go down. 
And then we became friends after that. Tough. (laughs) Yeah. So that, you know, I had one of the, one of my friends I was working with at uh, American Gym and he's great. He is uh, Robbie. Shout out to Robbie Morse. Robbie. Um, Great amateur fighter and has a lot of great amateur kids that he works with. And um, yeah, so he'd hold the pads. This was before I was coming back to fight or anything, but I always trained to keep my fat ass in shape too. (laughs) So like we do mitts, you know, like once or twice a week and I'd spar here and there and he would... And if you know Robbie, which you don't, but he's like the best hype man you could ever have, yeah. like ever, champ. Like he would call me champ all the time. And I was like, I thought I was the only one that he called champ. <laughs> he's like, champ, you're the best champ. And I'm like, yes, I'm the best. And then he calls like all his students that. So he goes, Aaron, you really got, I, you know, Bobby, Bobby's been calling me. And, and Bobby and I, I didn't meet Bobby until many years after this. Maybe the first time was through you, but we all came out of like La Habra gym. So, you know, that's where Labrado and and I and Kiki and Julio, and then he came, I don't know, I'm 42. So I think Bobby's like 34, 35. 35, yeah. Yeah. So he came, you know, five, six, seven years after us, but he worked with, he's mentored under Mac, which was Julio's coach. Mm -hmm. And, so interesting six degrees um but yeah and then finally one day i was like robbie i'm like i fucking don't have the time for this shit and he goes come on champ just get in there and i was like all right <laughs> so we did and it was you know we we, we did six rounds yeah we did six rounds yeah and so- um yeah, if you look at that um, picture, she looks like she just took a brisk walk in the park. <laughs> and my hair is like everywhere. And I'm like. <laughs> so let me ask you. Awesome. I, could, because you guys, since then, uh, it's evident that you're kindred spirits of a yeah, sort. So wh- how did you find the connection to each other? Or what is it about uh, Aaron that uh, you find inspiring and relatable? Um, well, I remember, too, because I was trying to find a, um, something to talk to her about. And I was like, oh, you're vegan? I'm vegetarian, <laughs> so we, you know, we had the animals, like the, the love That's of right. animals. That was the first yeah, because I didn't know I was, I was so, I was really nervous. So that, and then, I mean, I don't even really know. I guess just over time, just over time, yeah. and we worked together more, and it's yeah, like, and talked and you know, out. I knew she was a woman being in this sport as a woman for over 20 years, and I always talk about this. You know, you see, there's two kinds of women. There's women like us. That are serious about this and blah 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 and then you have another type of woman now that's fine but um you know this is a dangerous sport and i take it very seriously whether i'm fighting or just training people mm-hmm. and i've trained a handful of girls and i've had some you know and then i've had a couple real like reminded me of me you know and chelsea is one of those women where it's like She's um, a student of the sport, but she really loves when we say boxing is life like that's our we we mean it, you know, and we're not going in this. It's like if I was going back in this to have a modeling career or be on TV again or do it wouldn't be in boxing. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like I don't care about my face. I'm not worried. I'm I I, we fight because we love it. Mm -hmm. And she's real. She's one of those women that's like, you know, you get a lot of fakes in this sport. You know, I, I can understand that sentiment, particularly because I think when you look at the women today who are at the top of the sport, I've, I've seen other women, for instance, who this wasn't, let's call it their full time sort of mm-hmm, uh, mm-hmm. position as an example. You look at the women at the top of the sport, the amount of time that they spend focusing on craft and boxing, the amount of time that you guys spend focusing on boxing. Mm-hmm. Right. Is mm-hmm. like the same as what other people might, you know, like other people might leisurely focus on boxing, but be really into fitness mm-hmm. or yep. be really mm-hmm. into some other aspect and think that that means that you can box. Absolutely. Right. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, yeah. Because like I'm, I'm a super fit kind of person, right. so I can box. But like the amount of time a lot of people dedicate to fitness, like that's what boxers spend. Yes. Fighting. Just on that one. Yeah. Thing. Just on their craft. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So. Mm hmm. It came to all the way to this year. I think it was June of this year. You had your first professional fight uh, at the OC Fairgrounds, Roy Engelbert. Mm -hmm. And uh, that fight was was intriguing because the impression I get, not knowing very much about your opponent, the impression I get is that she was probably schooled in MMA. Correct. Mm -hmm. uh, Just watching the fight because it's she's very uh, was smothering you, kind of pushing you back to the ropes. In a way, it was to her own detriment because it doesn't allow her to get leverage or anything on punches. 
uh, and it was very kind of you know chase you around. Um, what was your experience, or or is that was it different for you? Given that it it seemed to be that you weren't fighting a boxer so much as you were fighting a, like maybe an MMA practitioner who came yes. to box is the impression yeah. I got. So what happened was when she was trying to set up another fight, who someone said about that Christina Marks chick, and I was supposed to maybe fight her in April. Mm -hmm. So some something mm -hmm. with that happened. So then that fight didn't happen. So the matchmaker was just pulled another girl that had fought for Roy before because there's no boxers out here. There's really not yeah. many. And they're not going to pay. They're here. not going to pay. Right. To they don't want to bring people in. in. So um, when I watched her um, MMA fights, you know, she 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 didn't fight like she fought me. It was like expecting her to throw some overhands and like whatnot. Mm -hmm. But then that first round, it was within the first like two minutes. Um, we headbutt, her head hit my nose and then, mm -hmm. you know, it was my first experience of, um, pouring blood out of my nose. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, so what happened is I would like, I guess I would, I don't know if I put my head forward too much, but I would kind of like, you know, get ready to throw a combo and she would run in like she was going to clinch. So we headbutt multiple times in that fight. So I kept getting headbutt and she's running in to clinch and she, I think she was trying to make me tired by grabbing onto me a lot, but then she couldn't punch. She'd just throw a little. Yeah. I never got punched. I don't think I got punched that fight. It was all mm -hmm. headbutts and little like. Mm -hmm. And when slaps. you say running in, she is quite literally, literally. running in. Yeah. yeah like she's and running. Then, and then I try to tell Chelsea this too because she goes, oh, I want to fight a boxer. You know, a boxer. And yeah. I go, but there are boxers that, that will fight, fight like, like her. Yeah. That's so I think that okay. was a good experience. And I have, said, so like you yeah. can't think that you're going to have these fighters that are going to be. Look, I mean, yeah. I fought Hannah and I'm all respect her, but it was like. I, she fought like that. Yeah, you guys headbutt. <laughs> and she came in and headbutt me like, I mean, I had not one mark on my face. Yeah. And she'd come in, you saw, and bum, 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 and she'd come in and she'd come under. She headbutted me and cut me. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, you know, and then the ref is like, oh, that was a, a punch. And I'm like, I've had like 30 pro fights and been cut punch. like twice. I didn't you even know? know you got cut because no. she didn't hit you yeah. that first round. You came back and I was but like, oh my God. But there's a perfect headbutt. example of like, yeah. She fought like that. Yeah. It came in and, th 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 and then. Yeah. Um, and it was not what I was expecting. So I was a little thrown off, but, um, but it was good experience it out, and yeah. the pressure, the pressure is like what, where a lot of people, you know, they break. So it's like, it was a great first fight. I made it fun. Fight. Yeah. Yeah, you did. <laughs> you did. It was I a great went first nuts fight. If you watch that. <laughs> you know, this is a, an interesting question from Stax on the chat. Stax said, oh, ask yeah. them what they think of Marlene and Sinisa fighting Ooh, three minute rounds. That's Ooh. great. I'm so excited that's for awesome. that fight. Um, so when did they, uh, they both agreed to do that, obviously. Yeah. I, Are they doing 10 I, rounds? I trust Stax's. Uh, 10 rounds? I'm, Stax, how many rounds is the fight? He'll, I'm he'll so chat excited us on, for that fight. I love According um, to Stax, Sinesia. Marlene and Sinisa fighting three minute rounds, which is, I actually think we talked about the round length last time you were here and we yeah, talked about yes. should do you feel they as though women be longer, should fight yes. three minute Absolutely. rounds that's and why yes. you don't see women get knockouts because they're two minutes by the time someone yeah. gets hurt the round's over and they go out and it's like they think that you know women can't yes there are physiological differences between the sexes of course but you know that extra minute we Matters. you have to go out there and you have less time to, we talked about that to make so an impression and everything like, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> you know it's when like you, amateurs uh-huh it is it's swing. like amateur yeah. fighting he I said uh okay stack said it's rounds. still a 10 round ten fight round. so okay. it's still gonna be a that's 10 awesome. round fight but three minute round that's well that's really cool. these yeah. ladies better perform because if they, they gas <laughs> out in the fifth round or sixth round then everyone will say this is why women can't do three rounds so they have a lot of that's how i look at it you know yeah it's very true, and I think even recently I've given examples of cases where if rounds had been three minutes or if fights had been longer, we might see different outcomes yeah, from, from some of these women's fights. Like uh, Katie, Heather Hardy and Serrano fight. Yeah. Yeah, Serrano like, would have ended that, that first round yeah. if she example, had three minutes. Yeah. Uh, Katie Taylor very well may not have made it out of her last oh, fight. Yeah. If that, if that, if we that, were all I know. watching that yeah. together. Yeah. I know. Uh, and then Clarissa Shields, I have no doubt that she would have stopped Christina Hammer yeah. yes, if, I think if, so if, too. if they were fighting the I full round. So so. Yeah. I think uh, you know it'll be interesting. It's an interesting experiment. Um, I, I mean, was. We train three minute rounds too. So that's I what everybody says. Yeah, yeah. We're, we're we train for three minute we rounds. Three minute rounds, thirty second breaks. You know, and it's like, I'd rather do. I'm okay with three. Yeah. But, you know, we'll see yeah. if these girls keep putting on good shows and you get more high level women, even like Katie Taylor and Clarissa. They want to do it. The other girls say yes, and then 
they'll make the standard. Yeah. Speaking of Clarissa Stacks, you had another question on here that uh, I didn't get to while Giandra was here, but uh, the question was, what do we think about Clarissa Shields saying that boxing doesn't deserve her? That's an, uh, I don't know uh, what that yeah. means. Yeah, I, <laughs> <laughs> what does that mean? You know what's funny? Uh, I actually didn't hear that comment. I never and heard in, that. In, in context, uh, I can't tell you what it is she's trying to, to say. So, uh, Stax, shoot me a link or something like that. We yeah. can pull up the article. But uh, I do think that that's a, a peculiar comment. Perhaps she means that she's being undervalued or underappreciated in the sport, which Possibly, you yeah. could probably make an argument yeah, that she may be. Absolutely. Yep. But she does have, you know, she says some peculiar things from time to time. Mm. <laughs> yeah, you know, you're out there in the, s in the limelight and... You just see, you, you watch how people handle themselves. It's not right or wrong. You know, people have the way that they want to be out there. And it's like, I'm pretty low key now. I used to not be, I used to be a lot like Clarissa, you know, and I push a lot of stuff out there. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah. When I was 25, 30 years old at the peak of my, you know, and, um, and I'm still, you guys know, very outspoken and, um, but I'm just, I sit back a little bit more, but I don't have an aversion to coming out and saying exactly how I feel, you know, so. So uh, we mentioned before, you are actually only two weeks removed from your second professional victory, a 70, uh, 72nd victory. So I guess the yes. duration of the round would not have made a difference bum, uh, bum, <laughs> bum. <laughs> in that particular <laughs> fight. Um, that one, oh I imagine, gosh. although you must be excited or exhilarated to get the victory, you probably don't learn as much from that fight as you might against other opponents, or do you? Am um, I mistaken about that? Well, first of all, Erin really fired me up before that fight, so I blame it on her for me going <laughs> nuts. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. There's yeah. a little video. You can see it in the video Colette made. Um, <laughs> Um, but I mean, I've been actually working on, because most of the time I'm taller than everybody, so I'm always moving backwards. So that fight, I, you know, I waited and saw what she did when she came out. And then um, I wanted to work on moving forward and pushing my opponent backwards with punches. So I got to do that, but, you know, she wasn't throwing back at some point. Engaging, so it was yeah. 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 I mean, I would say this because I also saw, you know, in the aftermath of that, there was some question about should the referee have stopped the fight or should the referee have not stopped the fight? Hey, look, <laughs> check it out. After 300 unanswered punches, it's probably. Yeah, yeah. yeah. like, like. It doesn't matter if a fighter in that circumstance was hurt or not hurt. Right. You have a responsibility yeah. to yeah. engage for a number of reasons. Yeah. Um, and I think that if you're getting hit, which was happening, and you're not hitting back, yes. it's the referee's responsibility yes. or job. Yeah, to, and he was to, yelling. To, yeah, if, he's, yes. if the referee will tell you in situations like that, hey, you got to throw punches. And right. if you don't do it, he's going to stop yeah, the fight. Yeah, she would throw right, like, one. Yeah. Yeah, you have to you have to throw punches or the referee she will stop to move her fight. hands from her face. I don't, I don't blame her, but and so, I just noticed I started measuring. I didn't. That's notice what I like. That's what I like. I was measuring, did. yeah, because you listened yeah. while we told you what to do, and you did it. Yeah, yeah, and I think that that's one thing that you just have to keep in mind. It doesn't really matter how hurt someone is in that circumstance. You can't just be in the ring and get hit and not hit people in mm -hmm. response. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? The referee would be irresponsible to let that continue mm -hmm. round after round after round. Mm -hmm my opinion yeah absolutely so do you have plans obviously to continue fighting professionally is there anything on the horizon that you're aware of at this time not yet um we were trying to get back in there november 9th in um, hawaiian gardens for roy but that show was full and then he says his december 5th one is full in costa mesa so now we might have to Start looking out of state. Well, or <laughs> shout out if uh, Ray from Red Boxing oh, yeah. Promotion put this woman on your show. I January? think they're doing one in January, January, the end of January. Yeah, if so. we can't find anything else, then let's go. You know? Yeah. Ray Rodas, Red Boxing Promotion. And that's where you did your, your last yeah. fight. Yeah. That was in Pico Rivera Sports right. Arena. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Red Boxing. And they and, and I love it because he really, um, he's he pushes women's boxing, mm -hmm. you know, and he had... Uh, Adelaida on there and yes. that girl and yeah so yeah I mean the girls put on exciting fights and let's go yeah I'm ready 
I mentioned at the top that you've been active also this year. So you've mm -hmm. had two fights since June. You've had three fights since mm -hmm. you were on the show in January. Mm -hmm. uh, the first was a disputed decision against Maricela Cornejo. Mm -hmm. You then challenged for an NABF title mm -hmm. uh, on Royal Engelbart's card. Mm -hmm. And then most recently uh, against Hannah, mm -hmm. uh, which I did not get a chance to see that fight. I haven't even seen it. You haven't seen no, it? No, I don't think it it's online. No, no, one, no one has seen it. And I contacted some of her people and I asked yeah. if we could get a you know a copy of it so they have maybe one. they don't want you to see a copy of it maybe <laughs> maybe maybe not you know it's like that was an interesting um you know again it's like i know what a side and b side is and she came out she actually did what we wanted to do because mm -hmm. i was like i wanted to box but i know when you go to these type of things it's like again the two minute rounds it's like fuck it you know you gotta put rounds in the bank so then she came out and i'd seen some of her fights and I said, this is a very winnable fight for me. This is a very good fight for me. I wasn't, you know, coming off two losses, even though it's B-side, I, this was a good fight for me. So she won the first round and then I, and then Bobby was like, sit back and box her. Mm -hmm. And that's what I did. I outboxed the shit out of her, you know, stick and move. I rolled, this was a really nice fight for me. That's why I was happy, even though I lost, quote unquote, it was like, I did a lot of things that I'd been wanting to do. And people don't understand this. It's like, you look at my record. I haven't, I don't have tune up fights. I don't have, uh, t you know what I mean? Those type of building. I got thrown right in. And same thing when I came back, I made the decisions. I had total control over what I wanted to do. And that's what happens, you know, but it's like, everything goes by. They're not these slow fights where you got someone that, I mean, these are top level women, women. Mari was is ath ath very athletic. She was very active. All of those girls, you know, I'm fighting the 10 years younger than me, fighting the best of the best and doing fine. I'm hanging with them. So the last fight with Hannah, this was on the Clarissa Shields card, which unfortunately Correct. was surrounded with controversy and she was yes. not able to Correct. compete. Yes. Um, I don't want to get too much into detail with it, but as comfortable as you are saying, yeah. I, as I understand it, there was an opportunity for you to elevate that fight yeah. beyond sort of the undercard. Uh, Hannah and I. Yes. Yes. They asked us to take the main event place. And I said, yeah. But, I, you know, I wrote about this and people who don't understand the sport again aren't going to understand what the fuck I'm talking about. Okay. I was contracted for six rounds. Okay. An average six round purse okay if you know boxing you know what it's between something and something okay it's not a lot of money but be that as it may it's like I'm fighting <laughs> not for the money because I love it but when you come in and you ask me 12 hours to go to a televised fight for a belt up at four more rounds on showtime nonetheless. on <laughs> fucking showtime yeah. and you're not gonna fucking pay me a dime more not a fucking cent more. Not X plus one cent. Nothing. No. No. Hannah would have done it. And I think her team said, yeah, because she's a young gun. And she's a, like, I don't have my career's over. I'm doing this for fun. I don't got 10 more years. And I don't want 10 more years. I know there, there's a handful of girls that I could go in. I'm still in title contention right now. I can beat some girls. 2020 is... I'd like to have a couple fights that are where I'm local and, you know, more of my friends can come to see me and then make another, you know, a world title shot and I can do it. So, but I'm not going to be, I'm not going to be taken advantage of. I'm not going to be discarded. I'm not going to be left out in the dust so that you can, and it's not what I'm worth. They don't think I'm worth that. They want to know how much money are they going to save by just replacing it. You know what I mean? Does that make yeah, sense? It's you. like they don't think Hannah and I, even though they signed her, that's her people, Salida. Sorry. They don't. You know what I mean? It's just like, uh, who can we stop from getting fired if they're an important person? You know, well, they should have had security there. There's a lot of things that they should have had. Yeah. I don't have a comment on what happened. Um, and I was right there. Yeah. So I keep it. that. I stay in my lane with that shit. But when it comes to this, and this is another thing. Another very big promoter called me recently a week's notice for another <laughs> huge world champion. I'd have to come up two weight classes for shit money. 
You know what I mean? And it's like, no, no. If you think I'm that bad, number one, give me a full camp. Okay. Well, you're going to give me a week's notice to move up two weight classes and challenge somebody in your, another hometown. It's like the money was crap. Number one. Mm-hmm. And number two, it's like, I make calculated decisions now. I'm not trying to get killed. You know, I've been in the sport a long time. I still have my faculties. I'm still can speak very well. I haven't taken a lot of punishment and I plan to keep it that way. You know, there's a couple dangerous women out there and then a lot of them are, they're okay. I'm okay with fighting 99.99% of them, you know, but, um, you're not going to make money off me when I'm going to walk away, make me an offer that can change my life. With that being said, you still plan to continue fighting into 2020, correct? Yes. And the big thing when I did an interview with Stax was if Hannah comes in and beats my ass, then I have no business being in there. She didn't beat my ass. She didn't do anything of the sort. You know, it was like dealing with somebody like her first fight. And I'm like, ugh. Mm -hmm. Um, And and they know if they're watching, which they probably aren't. But I've been very (laughs) open about I challenged her for a rematch. So she's fighting November 27th under Salida again, 10 rounds for her IBO and the WBC interim. They said no. So what does that say? Yeah, for the same titles, right? For the this, titles that they were offering. Them. Yeah, they, were, they weren't going to offer up her IBO, but they were going to offer the 54 uh, WBC interim. Okay. And I said, yeah, sure. So I said, I don't know what I would be getting paid for this one, but at least I'd be able to have... You know, I know what I'm walking into, a full camp, and I have total, again, total, I have total control of what I do. These people who, you know, the machine and all of that, it's like, I'm not Canelo, you know, I'm not making that type of money. I'm nobody to them. So I'm going to make the decisions that are in my best interest and my best health. And, um, but yeah, they turned it down, so. There's something I want to ask you both about uh, from a comment that you said earlier where you said there's no fighters here, right? And it's a challenge that that you have. And it's funny because so often on this show, we talk about Los Angeles as being the hotbed Mm -hmm. for boxing. So, Mm -hmm. And it occurs to me that when we say that, we're probably predominantly speaking about men, which is that you can walk into any gym Mm -hmm. and find good work. You can go get good work Mm -hmm. uh, to a lot of local gyms here in Los Angeles, Um, even guys who aren't world champions and things like that. But it sounds like it's, that's not necessarily the case for women. And no. to your point, they're not necessarily going to be flying in opponents. Yes. Um, so how much coordination has to take place in order to find it? Does it all rely on the matchmaker or do you guys have to, to Mostly, pull yeah. weight I mean, we'll, or strings? Yeah, we'll search um, box rec and try to... Uh. I, think, I think in the U.S. on box rec, there's 16 females that are listed on there in my weight class. Yeah. It's in like the United 16? States, like yeah. 16, 16, one, one six. Yeah, there's not even. There's nobody. So they keep asking all these like MMA girls, they'll, the matchmakers or whatever. They'll message these MMA girls to try to get yes. them to do a boxing fight out yes. here locally because, I mean, they can probably bring some girls in from Mexico, but yeah. Mm-hmm. Imagine what that's like in other states. Like, I mean, we're in Los Angeles. <laughs> yeah. Like we're the most populous region. We have so much, there's a boxing show every week, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. but like, there's a lot of women that do MMA. MMA. Yeah, yeah, that's true. And so we go back to that and it's like, you know, they have the opportunity. More women want to do MMA because for obvious reasons, but they get an opportunity to, to like parlay their modeling or this or that. And to, okay, that's cool. But they're not coming into boxing because this is a hard effing sport yeah. and they don't want to get punched in the face. Mm-hmm. And when they think that and they do this cross training and they're training with these other kickboxers and they're like, Oh, I'm doing good, <laughs> you know? And then they come and train with us and it's like, yes, I was an MMA fighter, but I can box. Yep. And then they're like, dink, 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 dink. Yeah, it's different. And they're like, yeah. Oh, wait a minute. <laughs> I might make a sound effect out of that one right yeah, there. Yeah. That right? was a good one. Clip. <laughs> dink, 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 franchise champion (laughs) yeah and even like trying to find sparring too Mm -hmm. is like it's hard yeah yeah i i'd seen uh we actually spoke before this that uh you know you had sparred maricella potentially had uh oh yeah Yeah. she was going up to spar with brackets yeah 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 Yeah, cecilia breakhouse and and uh so essentially you're you're attempting to get sparring with the the highest caliber or quality of she sparred with cyborg she was cyborg sparring partner like yeah. I mean, this, this one, this is another reason why I respect for her. It's like, she's, we talk about this. It's like, we all have fear, 
Like I get scared of stuff too, but I don't let it stop me. And she's another one where I was like, God damn, she's like my little spirit animal <laughs> sister. But she really is. She's like my little sister, you know. And um, I'm very protective of her. She's very protective of me. And, you know, we've been through some trenches. And yeah. it's like, I want to see her. Like, I'm not helping. She came to help me as well. You know what I mean? I came to Bobby and, mm-hmm. and her because of the relationship. And I was like, I like them. I, they're real. Um, yes, there's probably other people I could work with. And it's like, I think they'll give a shit, you know. And we formed a really good team. And a, we are familia. And... um We really care about one another. And that's the biggest thing is like, okay, you lose. There's people who will, you don't exist to them anymore. Yep. You're nobody. All right. Okay. So that's cool. But it's like, we don't have that type of relationship. And and I have the utmost faith in her and her trajectory and her career. It's like, that's why, you know, they tried to another promoter, we won't say who, but tried to switch do a little switcheroo uh-huh. with somebody who was not a good no 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 we're trying to get her wins we're trying to get her to be a contender you know and get in contention with these other girls and i think she can do that she has the look she has the style and she just needs to keep racking up the w's so and of course we look forward to it we <laughs> look forward to seeing more from both of you in yes. competition hopefully as soon as early 2020 yeah. Uh, and I also want to make sure that we give an opportunity for you guys to plug where we should follow you at mm. and how we should uh, keep stay in touch in terms of tickets and things like that. So where should we follow you at? Instagram. Um, my name, Chelsea, C-H-E-L-S-E-Y, two underscores, M-A-E. Chelsea mm. May. May May. May May. Chelsea May. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and uh, my, my Instagram is Aaron, E-R-I-N dot fights, F-I-G-H-T-S. Um and then I think I have a Facebook too, but it's yeah. like we don't use Facebook, Instagram. Uh, yeah, you, yeah, <laughs> but it, the old people use Facebook. That's how I noticed. Like when I started getting like you know, uh, reach out for that's like me. I use for, Facebook. No, like you know the promoters. Are, hey, yeah. a- hey, Aaron, and I'm like, oh shit, I, I need to be on Facebook. Yeah. Because well, Facebook was always like my friends and family only page, and Instagram's yeah. like the public one. But yeah. now all these people keep adding me on Facebook, right. and I'm like, Ugh. but the older generate <laughs> like, and I forget, I identify as a 28 year old, <laughs> but I'm 42 <laughs> years old. So in all rights, I am that old person, and I'm on Facebook, but. You know, that like the old school boxing community, they're not on Instagram post and you know, they're like they're on Facebook. So that's how they communicate. Yeah, I, I still have a face. I don't have like a Twitter or anything. What's uh, the other uh, one either. that they keep telling me? TikTok. I don't what is I, that? I don't I don't nobody, TikTok. Nobody TikTok. No. <laughs> Do you have that, Nate? Nobody Do you TikToks. Have TikTok? No. <laughs> nobody TikToks. We need one that's for like squeaks. A, that's like a like a um child like it's like yes. For 10 year olds yeah or like instagram okay. weird i don't know all right. i don't tick tock <laughs> all right and uh for me uh, i want to give a shout out to combat sports collective the official sponsor of just boxing live Beautiful. combat sports collective is a full circle fighter support system assisting fighters with strength and conditioning photography fighter resources apparel and soon supplements and recovery so that's combat sports collective logo of champions follow combat sports collective on instagram mm-hmm. and of all course right. Shout out to Podium Sports. Shout out to Podium <laughs> Sports, yes. <laughs> and shout out to uh, uh, Anthony Stack Saldana for helping me out on the chat today. Yes. Uh, you Hi, guys Cynthia. Make, make sure to Cynthia follow Stacks and Cynthia. You can follow me at Just Boxing Live on Instagram, at Just Boxing Live on Facebook. And I think that's all I've got for you guys today. All right. All Special right. thank you to Aaron Fights. And Aaron Fights, just call me by your Instagram <laughs> name. Yes. <laughs> Aaron fights. <laughs> I've had, the, we've had that. Yes. Somebody comes up, Aaron fights. Yeah. Are you Aaron so, fights? Yeah. Are you Someone Aaron fights? Me, Are you May May? I was like, <laughs> yes, I am. Maymay. Yes, I am. Uh, a, my yes, wife I thought am. your last name was May. No. Yeah, yeah. middle name. Yeah. 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 Uh, Bobby, Bobby came up with that one day. I don't know right. where I just started calling me May May. First, it was the White Devil. Yeah, yeah. and then <laughs> it's a color of White Devil. <laughs> and then it yeah. became May May. Yes, yes. So. Uh, Aaron Tohill, thank you very yes. much for coming down thank for the second you, time. Thank you, Sean. Always and Chelsea a pleasure. Anderson, you guys make sure to follow them and yes. you stay up to date with their ticket information as they will be fighting in early 2020. Absolutely. Yes. That's all I've got for you today. Thank you. Peace. Thank you. Thank you.